I've always said that it's difficult to assess the performance of the eye term w without actually being behind the sticks and feeling when the copter isn't doing what you mean to be telling it to do. But uh, it hasn't stopped me from trying to think of ways to evaluate the goodness of the eye term tuning in a more sort of quantitative manner. And one of the things I've thought might be a way to go about that is to look at the relationship between the eye term and RC command. So if RC command is what the pilot is telling the copter to do, in general, we want to see the I term not diverging from that too much. Uh, the I term needs to diverge in response to external conditions that are pushing on the copter. The I term needs to counteract those conditions. So the typical example is wind. If you're if wind blows on your copter and tips it to the right, you want the I term to compensate for that and tip it back to the left. But in general, you don't want the I term doing too much to the copter that is counter to what the pilot is commanding. So let's say you're rolling to the right and the wind blows the copter to the right. Well, you would want to see the cop you want the copter to be rolling to the right, and you wouldn't want the I term to be opposing that too much. In reality, I think that this whole, oh, the wind blows on the copter and the I term counteracts that. That's a very simple example, and it really doesn't reflect what the I-term is doing in flight. If we look at the I-term, we find that the I-term is usually responding to aerodynamic forces acting on the copter from within the copter. In other words, the rear props are somewhat within the prop wash of the front props, and so the rear props tend to make less thrust uh, for the same throttle value, and so we find that on pitch, in forward flight, the pitch I term is often positive. Um, it, it, the exact values depend on what the copter is doing and, and how the copter is set up. Uh, if we look right here, we see that uh, my pitch I term during forward flight, here I take off and I pitch forward, and here I'm flying forward. We can see that it is actually, just let me play this forward. We can see that in forward flight, my pitch I term is actually negative. Okay, so something aerodynamically is going on with my copter that is making it want to pitch forward in forward flight, and therefore the I term is counteracting that by adding some pitch back force. So the first thing we need to understand about the I term when we're doing this kind of analysis is that you need to establish what the baseline value for the I term is for any given sort of flight attitude that your copter is in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at how long it takes the I term to return to baseline when you finish inputting a command. So let's take a look at an example and hopefully it'll help that make sense. Here I am going into a turn. I'm going to be turning around this tree right here. And let's just watch that turn at 50% speed real quick. And what I'm going to do is uh, let me. You know what, let me make this bigger. I've got all three of them up, but actually I think I would prefer... Sorry, I'm making this up as I go. What we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, where is the moment that that term has, turn has ended? Where do we stop commanding additional turn? And of course that moment is going to be when the roll stick returns to zero. Right? And, and we're going to look at the movement of the I term and see how it corresponds to the stick. So... Here I am, I'm, I'm moving into the turn, both yaw and roll are pushed to the right, and I can see that as I do that, the I term falls, and, and it falls, it's pushing into the turn. So here, uh, I'm commanding right, uh, right uh, roll and right yaw, and the I term moves the same direction, they both move the same direction, they both are going negative, they're descending, and as uh, so the I term is pushing into the move, as the move continues, the I term starts to level out back to zero. And that's okay. That just means that the copter has achieved some kind of stability. Uh, the I, when, when the copter has achieved stability, the I term will be close to zero. That, that, that has nothing to do with whether we're flying level or whether we're turning or whatever. Whenever the copter is moving at the commanded angular rate, the I term and the P term will approach zero. It just means the copter is doing what it's told to be doing. So that's fine. That's good. And as we continue to move through the turn, and it's actually good to see the P and the I term near zero, 
It means that the PID loop is nearly perfectly doing its job. It means that the copter is doing exactly what it's commanded to do. Now, in reality, we very seldom see the P and the I term at zero for very long because the copter is a very dynamic system. But when we do see them sitting at zero, that's a good thing. That means that we can be very happy that our tune is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, well, take that with a grain of salt. If the copter is uh, destabilized and the PID loop, is, I mean, you could set your PID gains to zero, and then your P and your I would always be zero, and the copter would fly terribly. Obviously, we want them to be at zero while the copter is being responsive to what is being commanded to do. We don't want them at zero because, they're, you know, they're, they're just not doing the work they're supposed to do. So two different things. Okay, so we keep looking, and as we, now we're rolling to the left, Okay, and we could ask ourselves, there's this moment when we transition from right roll to left roll. What was the I term doing at that moment? And we can see that the I term is zeroed out. So it means that at the moment that we were commanding zero angular rate of change because the stick is centered, the I term was not pushing us in either direction. And that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see that at the moment that the stick is centered again, the I term is also zeroed out. What I don't want to see is the stick is centered, which means the pilot is saying, stop moving to the copter, stop, stop rolling. And the, if the I term is not also zero, the I term is saying, ah, keep rolling. We don't want that. When the stick, when the stick is zero, we want to see the I term come back to zero. Now we begin to push to the left, right? I term goes, goes to the left as well. RC command goes negative. I term goes negative. Okay. Now the I term zeroes out again. Great, that's fine. Now the state we're, we're doing some more turning. I term is off zero. Now we have returned to center, and notice that at the moment that the I that the stick returns to center, the I term is not centered. Now this is a normal condition and it's just fine, especially in more extreme flights. But what we want to do is we want to say how long does it take before the I term comes back down to a low value? We want to see the I term relatively quickly get back down to zero or, or to a low value. Now, in this case, I start turning the other direction. So I'm going, I'm not going from a turn into a straight, but I'm just, I'm going from a turn into another turn. I'm turning back the other way. So it's a little hard to judge what the baseline value should be for the I term here and how quickly the I term gets to the baseline. And so there I straighten out. And now I'm going straight again, and the I term is re relatively close to zero again. If we look at, let's take a look at pitch real quick. RC commands pitch and PIDI pitch. Let's take a look at pitch. So here is a place where I started commanding. Uh, this is pitch forward. The I term starts doing something in response to the dynamic condition. What it does isn't exactly very important, but I want to look at the moment that the stick returns to center here and how quickly the I term also zeroes out again. And it's relatively quick. 14.126 is my timestamp here. 14.4, so three tenths of a second. What I don't want to see is I don't want to see the I term continuing to push on the copter and push and push and push and push for a long time after the move is done. The I term zeroes out. Now I start pushing the other way with the stick. Now I'm pitching uh, forward. The I term is doing some stuff. And by the way, we establish here the stick is at zero, but the I term is negative. Is that bad? No, because earlier in the video, remember, we established that the baseline condition for the I term during forward flight is that the I term is negative. So here we have we are in forward flight, the stick is centered and means we are we are at the pitch attitude that we want. And the I term has returned to baseline. So it's not so much whether the I term zeroes out when the stick is centered, but whether the I term returns to its baseline. And the reason we were talking about the I term going to zero is because on the roll axis, the, the baseline position for the I term is zero. But on the pitch axis during forward flight, the baseline condition is that the I term is slightly negative. Okay, so here the stick is centered, 
and the I-term has returned to its baseline at about the same time, and that's what we want. Okay. Here the stick returns to center, and the I-term, well, I don't know what it's doing here. A little hard to judge there. It is not at its baseline, is it? If the baseline is negative, it's not at its baseline. Let's see what happens with the flight. I don't know. Hard to judge there. The I term is not at its baseline. Well, it didn't feel bad when I was flying it, but I'd have to give it some more thought. This may be another example of where tuning I is difficult if we're just looking at the black box traces. But I feel like the general method is relatively sound. We look at when the stick centers and we look at how long it takes the uh, I term to return to its baseline which for roll and yaw will usually just be zero, and for pitch in forward flight will usually be some non-zero value. Let's take a look at uh, yaw real quick. We'll go back to that, that turn, that ex uh, hairpin turn around the tree. Um, here is where the yaw starts coming in for the turn. Yaw goes negative. Interesting what happens here with I. I immediately uh, begins to push into the move and then pushes out of the move. Very interesting what's happening there. That might be worthy of some more analysis because the turn didn't really change and the input didn't really change. So I guess the throttle went up. Maybe something happened as the throttle went up. The yaw performance changed somehow as the throttle went up. I don't know. That's interesting. Let's keep watching through the end of this move though. Returning, returning. Watch RC command. Here's the moment where RC command is basically returning to zero, and notice that that's also the exact moment when the I term crosses the axis. And so that's generally, I think, what I want to see. That see if the I term lags and takes a long time to return to baseline, or lags RC command, I think that would suggest that the, the it would be fighting the pilot. The pilot might not like that feel. So, uh, so there, yeah. So, so sum up. Look at how long, when RC command returns to center, look at how long it takes the I term, how much longer after that it takes the I term to return to its baseline for whatever flight condition you're in. And if it's taking too long, it may suggest that either the I gain is too high or the P gain is too low. Low P gain will result in the I term having a lot of error to pick up. So if you can raise your P-term, that's the first thing, P-gain, that's the first thing to do. And then uh, lower your I-gain is the second thing to do if you've got that condition. Uh, so anyway, hope that's helpful and happy flying.